colleagues, I rise to propose that a bill for an act to provide special financial support for the revamping of the Nigerian Armed Forces with the provision of regular training for Armed Forces personnel and the provision of modern security and defense equipment and other related matters be read a second time. I so propose. To the areas that is occupied by the insurgents, we have met with service chiefs. We have met with security people from the United States of America and the EU. One thing is constant, Mr. Speaker, that Nigeria is at war. Nigeria is at war at the moment, but we don't have a budget that can finance the war. What we have at the moment, Mr. Speaker, is an envelope-based budget that cannot prosecute this war that we are in. Mr. Speaker, in most modern countries, there's always a fund or the convergence of people that deliberate, that agree, and that help fund this war. Mr. Speaker, we also met with the ebullient, efficient, compassionate governor of Bono State, who has also expressed his unhappiness at the way this war is being prosecuted. To this end, Mr. Speaker, we have come up with a bill that we believe can help end this war within the shortest possible time. It's a bill that has 23 sections. It has a board that appears transparent and accountable. We have not just allowed the service chiefs and defense uh, CDS become members. We have looked at the private sector. We have included men of integrity, particularly the MD, the uh, guy in Sovereign Wealth Fund. We've also included a retired CBN governor and heads of communication and um, um, oil and gas companies. To this end, Mr. Speaker, I pray that this bill be allowed to go for second reading, and I urge my compatriots and colleagues to kindly assist in the passage of this bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Honorable, honorable, I believe uh, Honorable Jimmy Benson was trying to drive home a point and he embellished the state of the nation at this time. I think uh, like Honorable Kiruka pointed out, you, you can even argue technicalities, but I don't think we are at war yet because war has even constitutional implications. It has to be declared formally and I believe the National Assembly, perhaps the Senate has to has to uh, approve, de approve deployment, deployment of so soldiers uh, through their resolution. So, but what we can say is that we have something akin to that. We are at a major security crisis, and uh, we need to create funds that will, bat that will, um, that will support that. So, uh, we. Uh, thank you, Mr. For instance, sir, one percent of total money accruing to the Federation account. 0.5% of profit made from the Sovereign Wealth Fund, an amount constituting 1% of VAT remitted to the Consolidated Fund. So it's a mixture, it's a potpourri of government and private sector uh, funding, sir. Okay, so it's a mixture of uh, both, uh, yeah, okay, continue please, Honorable Speaker. Of a more of the federal constituency, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'm a Lagosian. No distraction, please. First, let me thank uh, Jimmy Bensi for this wonderful uh, bill that he's moving for his patriotism. But I want to ask some pertinent questions. The army keeps saying that Boko Haram is degraded and that we have basically won the battle. I want to find out, has the army cried out to say that the information that will be given to Nigeria are lies. We need to know. Because if we are saying we need a special funding for the war, the army is telling us that they have won, that it's just a matter of time they have uprooted. And now we are giving them a special funding. My fear is that even when that special funding comes, are they going to account for it? I'm aware that a billion dollars was at the time announced that we're taking it from the 
Is it sovereign account or federation account for that fight? Could I have, have that money been disbursed? If it was disbursed, what did they use it for? A billion dollars. Is that not enough for them to fight an army they describe, I mean, rebels described as ragtag uh, uh, rebels? How can they get a billion dollars and we don't know what it's used for? I want to say that there's absolute need for accountability on this war. If there's no accountability, even if you give them the whole world, they will not use it for anything. And again, while I support uh, Baba Jimmy, because he's my brother from Lagos, I also want to say that 1% of Federation account money is too much. 1% from VAT is too much. Half percent from, uh, uh, what do you call it, from, uh, 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 just a moment, half percent from, uh, from several welfare is too much. How much is the state getting? And then, what about the normal allocation that is going to the army? What are they going to be using it for? Are we going to stop that altogether? We, while I support this bill, we need to examine the bill very properly. And then again, we must define the war very well. Now, four days ago, uh, three days ago, uh, Honorable Wife moved a motion about his people who have been attacked in the room in Delta State. Healthmen are attacking, killing people everywhere. Ten people were killed. Is that not part of the war? So when we are talking about it, let's not look at only, uh, look at only uh, North East. Recently, 30 people were killed in uh, Casino. Did um, did um, did the mover uh, sponsor of the bill, or do, does the bill particularize it to Northeast? It says Nigerian Army. Okay. Do do me. Do you have your concern with you? Okay. Read out section 83 of the Constitution to the benefit of contingencies fund for the Federation and. Fund for the Federation and for authorizing the President is satisfied that there has arisen an urgent and unforeseen need for expenditure for which no other provision exists to make advances for the fund to meet the need. Let me ask you, what you've just read out now, is that not the fund that is being created by the National Assembly? Military. And then they can reduce it. Sir, I've agreed with you that I'm supporting this bill. But what I'm, yeah, but what I'm saying is that. No, no, no. The, the money. Okay, your, point is, your point is taken. Don't worry, don't worry. It's okay. You've made your point. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, Honorable Sada Soli. Speaker, this is yet another legislative initiative in addressing the security challenges of this country. Yes. Mr. Speaker, this bill is not asking too much. Honorable Ogene, please listen to Honorable Sarasole. He's taking issues directly with you on what you just said about too much. Mr. Speaker, this bill is not asking too much in order to strengthen the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, these are our first line defense while we are in our beds. Mr. Speaker, there is no better time for the House of Representatives to come to the aid of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria than now. Mr. Speaker, yes, we have security challenges. Yes, if we are a country that is peaceful without security challenges, we, can, we cannot still stand and fold our arms not to support our armed forces. Mr. Speaker, this bill is trying to fill in the, the funding gap in strengthening our armed forces. Mr. Speaker, one of the merits of this bill is to make our armed forces result-oriented and more effective than what they are now. Mr. Speaker, getting 1% and then uh, uh, driving some funds from the sovereign uh, social wealth fund, taking something from the VAT, taking something from the ticketing, and also driving some advantages of our private sector and uh, philanthropic uh, individuals of this country, we are still not asking too much. This country is not asking too much. This is the time we should wake up and come to the defense and assistance of our Armed forces, gallant armed forces, daily these young men and women 
are dying in defense of each one and every one of us in this chamber. Mr. Speaker, one, one of the most important aspects of this bill is the money will be collected by federal inland revenue, not an agency. So we are sure the money will be collected prudently and will be applied judiciously. Mr. Speaker, above all, the money will be budgeted by National Assembly. So I do not think members of this uh, August Chamber should exercise any fear with regards to this bill. This bill is nationalistic. This bill is, uh, is here to address some of the challenges our armed forces are, are facing. And another thing, this bill will be subjected to review in every five years or less. So it's futuristic. And every law is supposed to be futuristic. So I appeal to our colleagues to allow this bill to go to the second reading and we take it to the committee and we we'll make the necessary amendments so that we can strengthen it to see that we can have a better armed forces of Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, honorable colleagues, I can just spend willy-nilly however they want it. No. Subsection 2 actually mandates that it's a contingency fund that they will now bring their request for expenditure from that fund to the National Assembly for approval. So there are already checks and balances that have been baked into, 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 the, into that section and into the bill. I just wanted to clarify, Honorable Shaulu. I don't want to bore the House. I just want to give three facts to help us understand the challenges that the security agencies have. Uh, when people say that there is no money in the security agencies, perhaps people don't understand the enormity of the problems that we have. For instance, in the Northeast, in 2016, uh, we had the ratio of soldiers to landmass was one soldier per five kilometers. I brought a motion to the floor of the House on, in the last assembly, which was passed. One of the, the, one of the challenges that we have in Nigeria is that the ratio of people in arms to the population is one of the lowest in the world. We are supposed to have a minimum of, by UN standards, about 19 million people in the armed forces today. That is about 10 percent of the population. But we have today, including the police and civil defense, the police is about 350 or 320, the army about 100,000, Civil defense and all the rest you add, you add up, we are barely 600. What's your point of order? Okay. Uh, sorry, these are security matters that should not be. The strength of our army and our police. And these are things that should not be disclosed to the public and to the enemies. So if you can keep your, your contribution, some of these people who are the enemies of Nigeria don't even read, but they hear and they watch TV. Saying, Honorable Speaker, is that we are on the man. We don't have enough. That's part of the reason why we need security, where we need funding. For instance, like I did say, uh, if you look at the strength of the U.S. Army, for instance, the Army alone in the U.S. is 100 million. Uh, sorry, it's 1 million. And other security, other apparatus are there. So you have security people involved in different things at different purposes. So we will need these resources for the security. Secondly, in terms of equipment, this information I'm going to give is in our budget. Our budget for the Army in 2017 was just, for capita, was about 19 billion. 19 billion at that time was about $500 million. And that, well, let's not talk about the release. And that money will not, was not even able, will not even have been able to buy the basic equipment that was needed. Not to talk of the barracks where soldiers live. Is, is of common knowledge, and the military people, Minister of Defense has said it several times. If this war with uh, Boko Haram, for instance, ends quickly, and our soldiers return, 
they will have nowhere to stay in the barracks because they are, they, in the last 10 years, most of the people who are recruited don't even, have no, never lived inside the barrack. So part of the reason why I think when we are talking about funding of security agencies, we need to go. It was for this reason, uh, Honorable Speaker, that in the last assembly we passed a bill that I brought to the House on the need to set up uh, a bill to set up a national security agencies trust fund. And uh, it passed, but didn't go, it was it is in the House now. And I think they need to work with it also. Because there are several windows of opportunities, best practices that are being done in other parts of the world. Those of you who travel frequently, you stay in hotels in Europe. There are taxes that you pay that go to the security agencies. They call the terrorism tax. You may not notice it's very small. Because if you are going to fund the security agencies from the resources that, that is in the budget, you cannot. The United States this year, for instance, the budget that it has for the army is, and regularly the United States, over 50 percent of its annual budget goes to the military. This year, I think it's about either 780 million or 580 billion dollars. So my plea is that we should look beyond, we should be careful about the way we lampoon the security agencies publicly. Yes. Three things happen when you do that. First, you discourage the civilians from cooperating with the security agencies, and that compounds our problem. Thirdly, secondly, we create a situation where uh, you, the morale comes down. I want to assure us, sir, with due respect as I end, that there is no person who is going to be the chief of Army staff, chief of naval staff, chief of Air Force staff, that today is not in a command position. Therefore, we, the same problem happened with the former, chief, the former military people that we had. We even said, and some people said they were going to take them to ICCs. In fact, there are subsisting cases against, I think, General Hejirka and General Minima in ICC. And all these things that we do, they create problems for the security agencies. So it's a good thing that today, we are, this, it is good today that we are talking about funding them. And we should take it seriously. The money that my friend, uh, my colleague and good friend talked about, $1 billion, is barely able to do anything for the security agencies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable God. Personnel, uh, one, you said it reduces the morale of the personnel, and that's a fact. Two, it makes it difficult for the civilians to even cooperate with the military. If we're here basically lampooning the military. And three, it encourages, it encourages the insurgents, because they're seeing, they're hearing the way we're lampooning, and it, it emboldens them. Uh, so we have to, we have to deal, do, deal with this thing with some level of uh, discretion. So thank you for the contribution. Honorable Luke. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Onofiok Akpan Luke. Etinan, Mr. Ibom, Mr. Rubio, Federal Conference, Mr. Speaker. I'm from Akwa Ibom State, sir. Mr. Speaker, my constituent last year gave me a power of attorney, blanket power of attorney, to be able to act on their behalf on certain issues as it bothers the Federation of Nigeria and as equally would affect them. And one of such issues, Mr. Speaker, is the issue of ensuring that I speak on their behalf as it concerns the security of lives and properties of not only them, but the entire uh, Nigerians, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, on that note, acting on that power of attorney, I want to support the bill that has been presented um, before us by, um, um, by some sponsors, with Honorable Baba Jimmy Benson as the lead sponsor, as it seeks to establish a particular fund to support our armed forces, Mr. Speaker. I want to equally um, applaud the laudable objectives of the bill we seek to make provision for contingency fund for our armed forces, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, while acknowledging the fact that there is paucity of funds to be able to 
uh, cater for our armed forces as it ought to, which has necessitated the coming of this bill before us. While we are making efforts towards making funds available for our armed forces, Mr. Speaker, I think that there is something at the core of it which we must start to address from the very day one, which is the issue of checking the wastages and blocking leakages. Mr. Speaker, year before last, as a presiding officer in a state legislature, Mr. Speaker, just like it happened across the 36 states of the Federation, we passed a resolution at the level of the State Houses of Assembly authorizing the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to take the sum of $1 billion from the excess crude, excess crude account for the purposes of security in this country. That was money made available to help in funding our armed forces and checking other securities. But Mr. Speaker, somewhere along the line, we have had to hear cases of people who were meant to use the money to act, having had to misuse or misapply such monies. So while we are making effort to make the monies available, Mr. Speaker, we equally must make effort towards making sure that we block the loopholes and leakages. Mr. Speaker, the only point I would disagree with the provision of the bill is that, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Section 217, um, um, subsection 1 and 2 establishes the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and section 2 and the paragraph thereby gives the National Assembly the latitude, the powers to be able to enact, on, enact laws and legislations on the issues of armed forces, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the laws of the Federation, CAP, Chapter 820, makes provision for the establishment, for the establishment of the armed forces, it's the Armed Forces Act, Mr. Speaker. And the short title reads, I mean the long title reads, an act to provide for the command, maintenance, and administration of the armed forces of the Federation. So, Mr. Speaker, my suggestion is that instead of us to come by way of a fresh bill, we can seek to extend the frontiers of the Armed Forces Act by making provisions for its amendment instead of having to have a fresh bill seeking to establish a support fund. So my provision and my position is that we can come by way of amendment of this bill to make, I mean by amendment of this act to make provision for the establishment of this fund under the Armed Forces Act as it is in the laws of the Federation of Nigeria. Those are my humble submissions. Outside that, Mr. Speaker, I support this in its totality. To strengthen our armed forces. But the most important aspect of it is that it must be time back. That's why I love what you have just said. We have not even agreed whether it's going to be five years gone. Because if we don't put time ban, then we'll be creating another appropriation bill indirectly. And we'll be creating a, a situation where some people will just have free funds. And it, after, after addressing that problem, the funds will become idle funds that they can be shared anytime. That's why I just want to make a suggestion that there must be a time ban for the phone. It's good and, and we support. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Honorable Taiwan. I think you are right because we are... Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this bill because security is not only government business, it's everybody's business. And security is very, very expensive. Very, very expensive. Mr. Speaker, Honorable colleagues, I know and I want to use this opportunity to urge my colleagues to support this bill so that it be passed for second reading. I want us to note, one, that is this assembly that passed the police trust fund, which Mr. President assented to. And this is also going to create funding sources for the Nigerian armed forces. Very important. No amount of money is enough for security. And like the mover of the bill said, that we are using envelope budgetary system, which is inadequate in all sectors, not to talk about security. And so there is always a need for all, all Nigerians, in one way or the other, to contribute to funding security. Because the essence of security is to secure every Nigerian, as well as our assets. And so, 
in supporting this bill, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I want to say that at the level of public hearing, we should also note that while we are putting together source of funding, we should also consider the pressure that the different source of funding contribution to different trust funds will create on our citizenry. Take, for example, we have the police trust fund. If at that time the police trust fund bill are taking care of all this, maybe all these funds would have been warehoused at one point for proper management, monitoring, and appropriation, as well as distribution to all security agencies that operate in the country. Of course, we all know that our incomes are limited as individuals, as organizations, our incomes are limited. And so in putting together the funding sources, we should also consider appropriately the funding sources that we will not create excessive burden on our people. I think that is important, and I feel that I should bring it to the notice of the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I think um, we have thoroughly debated this. It's a subsidy bill. Subsidy on yeah. What's that? Leader. A bill for now to provide special financial support, training and modern security equipment for the revamping of the Nigerian Armed Forces and for related matters. Second reading. Thank you. Bill referred to Committee on Defense.